Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm going to make something from Avengers Endgame. This might need a spoiler alert for some of you. Now, what I'm making, it has been in the trailer for the movie. Marvel has officially released a few seconds of video of it, and it's in the thumbnail to this video. But if you want to wait to see the movie first, now's the time to hit that pause button and then come back after you've seen the movie. I'll give anyone a chance to do that. Today, I'm going to make Thanos' new eight-foot double-sided butter knife from Avengers Endgame. The first thing I did was find good reference pictures from the Hot Toys 1-6 scale collectible figure that's coming out. Now, this is the same thing I did last year for Stormbreaker, but this year, we have already seen official images of the butter knife, so my build should be a lot closer. I printed out some full-size patterns. Well, they're not really full-size. Eight feet is a little too big. I could see making a seven foot tall Thanos costume, so I scaled my sword to be seven feet long, which is still taller than me. The center grip will be PVC pipe. I want something a little stronger than the foam grips that I've made for Thor's swords. And to strengthen the foam blades, this time I'm gonna use a solid fiberglass rod. Now I've had this thing for years. I think it came off blinds from a patio door. At least I'm pretty sure it's from a set of blinds, but that was a long time ago and I really don't remember. I mark the center of the rod, and then I'll mark where the PVC pipe will need to be. I plug one end of the pipe with a disc of floor mat foam and some hot glue. Then I can fill the pipe with some urethane casting resin. This way the grip will be sturdy and solid, and the foam plugs will keep the rod in the center. Casting urethane sets up pretty quickly, but while I wait, I can check out a new game, Raid Shadow Legends. Yeah, this is looking good. Oh look, the dragon's favorite snack, char Royal champions. <laughs> Forget everything you think you know about mobile games because one of the most ambitious RPG projects of 2019 has just been released and it's gonna change everything. Introducing Raid, Shadow Legends. Playing Raid is the most immersive experience you'll find on a smartphone and it could only really be compared to the biggest PC and console titles. And the best part, it's totally free. Raid has all the features you'd expect, like an amazing storyline, awesome 3D graphics, giant boss fights, PvP battles, and hundreds of champions to collect and customize. I never expected to get this level of performance out of a mobile game. I mean, look how crazy the level of detail is on these champions. Raid is getting big real fast, so get in early. Starting now will give you a huge head start. And there's also an upcoming special launch tournament with crazy prizes. So go to the description of this video now and download Raid only through my link to get 50,000 silver immediately and a free Epic Champion as part of the new player program, courtesy the Dev Team. I'll see you there. With the center grip fully cured, I cut up some thin walled PVC pipe and glue it to the center pipe in a staggered pattern. I just alternate for the whole grip over gluing the pieces as I go, because I don't want the grip coming apart later. I didn't think about the resin giving some counterbalance to the middle. That's actually gonna be kind of cool. All right. I cut out one of the cross guard patterns. Now I'm gonna need to build it up to be thicker than the center grip, so I cut out eight copies. And I'm using 10 millimeter foam from TNT Cosplay. It's denser than the format that I normally use, and it's smooth on both sides. The cross guards are the same on both sides, just reverse of each other over the center grip. So I marked which side the blade goes on. I spray gray primer on top of the grip. Painting it now is easier than taping off all the foam later. I made a hole for the fiberglass rod to pass through and cut out a set of panels that'll fit over the cross guards and some Art Deco inspired pieces that fit inside of them. Now, I'm not crazy, right? Thanos has an Art Deco look to his stuff. The main blades are cut from more of that 10 millimeter sheet. I carefully mark where the rod will fit and cut out a place for it to fit. I like to use golf club shafts for swords as well, but those are tapered. And this solid continuous rod is nice. I can make a thinner blade. I got a roll of two millimeter foam from a craft store and cut out four more copies to skin the blades. There are recessed details in the sides of the blade, and I cut out the first ones with this layer. When I glue the skins on, 
I taped that cutout that I had made back into the thick blade. So I want the hole to stay even all the way through. <laughs> Cut out the second set of skins. This has a lot more of those recessed cutouts, and I also want to cut off where the blade edge stops. This will give me a line that I can sand to. And I mark where the big panel lines are going to go. I can use a wood burner to make them later. I carefully glue these pieces down. With the thin strips of foam, it would be easy to twist them or even stretch them. Now, I know they're still not going to be perfect, but I'm going to do the best that I can. And with both sets of skins on, there's four millimeters of foam and glue that'll fit over the fiberglass rod. It'll still break if you mistreat it, but this will be secure enough that I can carry it around a con all day. I sand down the edges. The skin layers will never line up properly, so I cut them oversized on purpose so I could sand them down later to make them perfect. I also grind the side where the cross guards are. I mark the center of each blade, or at least close to the center, as a guide for sharpening the blades. I start with my random orbit sander, sanding down the edge of the top skin layer to the center of the guideline. Now this sander works really well, it chews through EVA quickly, but because it rotates, it catches corners and tears the foam. I picked up a cheap quarter inch sheet sander, which is a little slower to use, but it only vibrates. It doesn't spin, so it won't catch the edges of the foam layer and it won't tear them. I look for the glue seam of the two layers along the blade edge, and when that looks to be parallel with my cutting edge, I know the angle of the blade is consistent as I'm going to get it. And the square shape of this sander is much better for getting into the corners where the knife edge starts. I can use super glue to fix the places where the foam was torn. Just the sanding took an hour and a half, and my hand still tingles from holding the sander. I have blades. Now I need to put these pieces in. I need to cut out a large and a small feather detail, one set for each side of both blades. It looks a lot like those feather pieces that are on the gauntlet. These are just much bigger. And I only cut out the deep parts. I'll lightly cut in the small lines after they're glued in place. I also leave some of the edges of the finer pieces attached, that way they won't glue in crooked and they're pretty easy to cut out later. I spread glue into the recessed places on the blade, but I don't want to stretch the thin foam by brushing glue on them, so I tear off a piece of upholstery foam and I sponge it on instead. As I place each feather, I set the shoulder part in first and make sure that the rest fits in nicely. Now, I still miss in a few places, and I can use a metal ruler to pop those edges back inside. Then I went back and cut out the small placeholders for the really thin pieces and cut in those thin lines which makes it look like the knot work that's on the side of the blade. Using a wood burner and a metal ruler, I burn in all the long panel lines that run down the sides of the blade. Now this was easy because I marked where all the lines go. It's just connecting the dots with something that can burn you. There are back guards or something like that on each blade. These are slightly different from each other, so I carefully cut out two sets from EVA and I cut out the thinner grill piece from some eight millimeter self-adhesive foam. There is some raised detail where the blade and cross guard meet. Some six millimeter foam will be the base. Its placement shows me where the back guards will fit. But before I glue them on, I cut a bevel on each of them, and then I can start gluing the pieces down. Then I add some filler to the back and trim the edges and grind them down. I start adding layers of details to the cross guard connector. I make all four of these identical. They're really kind of hard to see on the toy. I add enough layers so they're the same height as the cross guards, so I can add a single piece that'll span over the two of them. To connect the blades, I put contact cement where the cross guard touches the blade, and then I use Gorilla Glue for the fiberglass rod. I add the little piece to each cross guard and use my heat gun to seal the EVA foam and that opens up all the fine cut lines on the sides of the blade and on the cross guard. So one of the fun things with these giant alien weapons is get him to fit on screen. Where's the, where's the edge? Is it all there? I, I, I doubt it's all there. Now I get to paint it. I spray paint three coats of Plasti Dip as a primer sealer on all the EVA pieces. All right, silver. I decided after spraying two coats of silver spray paint that I wanted to just tape everything off so I could then paint the gold, retape, and then paint the black. I spent about three hours taping and painting the blade. Just brushing acrylic paint might have been quicker, but I would have all those brush strokes on the black and gold. 
As bright as the colors are, I still want some weathering, and I plan to keep it simple. I open a bottle of black shoe polish and just brush it on and wipe it off, rubbing it into all the recessed areas. I work in smaller patches, and I always wipe in the same direction of the blade to minimize streaks. I cover the entire thing, blades, cross guards, and the grip. I even checked if it worked on the back guards, but it didn't make any difference. After weathering nearly 14 square feet of sword, I use some silver rub and buff compound to add highlights to the back guard, just trying to lightly line the edges. I want the edges to be defined and seen in pictures. I, I don't just want it to be a black blob. I also add highlights to the silver blade and I rub some gold onto the gold. I shot this video and completed this sword build before the new Avengers Endgame was actually released. So I'm really excited to go and see it and see how close in detail I am with this to what's gonna be on the screen. Now I had used the Hot Toys 1-6 scale action figure as a reference and they're actually usually pretty right. So I'm not too worried about it, but I'm happy to have a big sword made out of foam that'll be easy to carry around all day at a con because this is how Odin makes. Do I look like the guy from the movie? I want to thank Gilbo FX, the original Nick Show, and all of my Patreon supporters. You guys really do help keep this show going. If you like this video or have a suggestion for something for me to make, please leave a comment below. And if you like what I'm doing, don't forget to subscribe. If you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.